Judith beheading Holofernes is the first treatment of this biblical episode by Artemisia Gentileschi. And one of her most famous works. She painted it around 1612 and made a second version after moving to Florence, where she became the first woman ever to be accepted into the artist's academy. At some point, this large painting displayed at the Museo Ariel Bosco di Capodimonte in Naples has been reduced along the top and left sides, but no one knows for sure how much of the painting has been lost. I think that this painting by Artemisia is my favourite of her work because I love how Artemisia has perfected the balance between sensuality and violence. The scene depicted here is from the Old Testament Apocrypha. It recounts how Judith, a Jewish widow, saved the city Bethulia from the Assyrians by killing their general, Holofernes, while he fell asleep drunk in his tent. It was quite a common subject for Baroque painters, and it has been treated by many great artists, such as Titian, Rembrandt, Rubens, and Caravaggio. But while most of them chose to portray the aftermath, Artemisia shows a climatic moment of the beheading itself in its sheer brutality. To add to the drama of the killing, she makes great use of chiaroscuro, which is a violent contrast between light and dark areas. She also employs bright primary colours for her heroine's dresses, blue and red. I feel as the viewer guilty for wanting to see more and understand more what's truly going on. And that's due to all of the fine details that she's included within the painting like little secrets that I can discover on a second and third look. Her take on the episode is savage and realistic. We see the struggle, the sweat, the blood. Holofernes has been asleep in bed, now stained with fresh blood. He lies, his head towards us, eyes open, with Judith's sword still in his throat but he is not dead yet. His right arm is still reaching up towards Abra, Judith's maid and accomplice. Judith's physical positioning is very suggestive, the way her breast is spilling out of her dress. Moreover, the small triangle of blue created by Judith's arms and Holofernes's bicep and torso reveals that she has one knee on the bed, that she is almost indicating that she must straddle Holofernes's entire body to subdue and kill him. It's a terrifying bloodbath. Their struggle is visible. Judith frowns, her curls stick to her sweaty forehead as she firmly grips Holofernes' hair with rigid arms and reddish hands. See that? There's a blood spot on the crease of her armpit. For all the gore and grotesqueness of this painting, it's hard not to admire the beauty of the sword, how it's engraved, the way the light hits it, Some scholars interpret this painting as an autobiographical statement. They say Artemisia painted herself as Judith, and while Holofernes represents the painter Agostino Tassi, who raped Artemisia when she was 17. But others find this autobiographical interpretation too simplistic and problematic. Why should a woman's entire body of work and identity be defined by her sexual assault? Nevertheless, this savage painting continues to fascinate us, in no small part because its author is a woman who experienced brutal violence firsthand. <laughs>